Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Psalms, Psalms 23. It's a very well-known chapter, Psalms 23. We're going to look at verses 1 through 6, Psalms 23. The title of the message is, Are You Going Through the Valley? Are You Going Through the Valley? Are You Going Through the Valley? Psalms 23. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Dear Father, thank you for saving us from hell, Lord, and uh, giving us another opportunity to be this Sunday morning. Father, I understand that today I have this contract with Lord, Father, thank you for giving us trial and mercy so that we can be here to praise your name, Lord. As we praise your name today, help us to really keep our attention on you, Lord, whatever we're going to go, whether it be personal problems, whatever problems that we may have, please help us to touch the side. Please help us to listen to preaching. Please open our hearts as you use pastors to deliver your word to us today, Lord. Lord, Father, uh, fill him with the Holy Spirit, yes. Lord. Uh, whatever you ask to say, we know that you, uh, you gave it to him, Lord. So please help us hear it in that way. And, uh, as we go throughout the rest of the day, keep us attentive, Lord. Keep, uh, help us to love you more. Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. 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 Are you going through the valley? It's a very famous psalm, and David is going through his own valley. When we look at verse 4, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's going through the shadow of death. Can you imagine the times when you feel like you're walking through the valley where the death is, you know, inevitable in front of you? If you have gone through those valleys, you know what it is. You know how hard it is. You know how tough it is. If you haven't gone through those valleys, you know, expect it to come as a Christian. It is very important for Christians to understand that you and I cannot be in the mountaintop always. You and I cannot be expecting to be a mountaintop always. We always share you know, our testimonies that, hey, I love the mountaintop experience. Especially you know, upcoming summer camp when we have jubilee blowouts. We go through this mountaintop experience where everything in your life feels like it's all spirit filled where all you do is praise God, all you do is listen to great preaching, all you do is fill with all the great testimonies, and then all you see is a brotherly love, you know, because you know, that's what mountaintop experience is. But if you have a mountaintop, you're going to have valleys for sure. Yes. And there's another mountaintop. In Christian world, you have to think of it like this intervals. You know, there's mountaintop experience and there's a valley. And there's a mountaintop experience and there's a valley. If you have experienced a mountaintop experience, then you have to expect that you're going to go through the valley. Right. And these valleys encompasses everything that life throws at you, everything that the world throws at you, and everything that the devil throws at you. You have to understand that valley is something that you and I have to go through, no matter what, as a Christian. But the sad thing is that a lot of people, once they are in the valley, they're stuck there. They don't get out of the valley. It's not going through the valley. You are in the valley forever. A lot of Christians do nothing for Jesus Christ after they get saved. Majority of the Christians, why? They're just stuck in the valley. They can't get out of it. They don't understand the valley. All they do is they just complain, murmur, and always thinking about, the mountaintop experience only instead of trying to go through and go through these valleys to grow as a Christian. Many of you are baby Christians because 
you don't want to get out of the valley because you don't want to grow out of the valley because you feel so comfortable in the valley. But I don't know how you could ever get comfortable in the valley. In the valley, you're going to be always filled with all the, how should I say, all the sins that you don't want to see. In the valley, you're going to experience these sin problems over and over and over and over. In the valley, you're going to be constantly attacked by the devil over and over and over and over. You know, when you're at the top of the mountain, you get the least amount of attack. Especially during the, you know, old days when people were fighting, they always wanted to have the ground on top so that you could attack against the bottom. So when you're on the top, you have less things to worry about, right? You know, you don't have to really worry about things that are going on in the valley. Like when, we're, when we have our mountaintop experience, we don't worry about work, right? We don't worry about, you know, your finances. You don't worry about even like your health per se because the people being so filled with the Holy Ghost kind of gets you through it. You know, the people helping you. But when you're in the valley, a lot of times you're alone. You have to understand that. You can't be expecting your husband and wife, your children, your pastors, pastor's wife. You can't be expecting the TV, the world, to get you through it. You have to realize that it's your own battle. You have to realize that you have to go through it on your own. You have to come out of it on top, not on your own, obviously, by the presence of God, by the powers of God. You have to go through God's plan. Every one of you, you and I, have something that God has put in our path. And that's called path. You know, we have our own path that we have to go through. And a lot of times, when path gets tough, when you have a lot of stumbling blocks, when you have a lot of, you know, objections, when you have a lot of adversaries and enemies, what do you do? You stop at the path. You just stay where you are. And the worst thing that a Christian can do is just stay where you are. You can't stay where you are. You have to go through. You have to trudge through. That's what soldiers are all about, right? Christian soldiers. Yes. Imagine in a war, you're just stuck at the same place. Enemy is going to attack you. Yeah. Right? How are you going to fight against the enemy? You have to move. Yes. I mean, imagine all the bombs are coming down. And Lord has given you all the escape routes. You're like, Lord, I know you're going to protect me. And then bomb comes down, you get blown up, and then you're in heaven and you're going to God. God, why did you kill me? You know, I was praying so hard for you. And then God goes, son, I gave you all the routes to escape it. But you didn't take it. In your life right now, I'm sure God has given you those escape routes, these hiking trails to get up to the mountaintop again. And when you talk about hiking, hiking is not easy. Some of them might say it's easy, you know, like brother <laughs> sitting there, right? He's an avid hiker, yeah. right? But even the most avid hikers, if you want to climb Mount Everest, you know, Mount Whitney here, it's tough. Yes. I mean, you have to be trained. You have to understand the climate. You have to have some good equipment. And... When you look at your valley that you're going through, you know, how are you coping with it? How are you trying to get out of that valley or go through the valley? You know, the conclusion of all this should be that you need to experience mountaintop experience in the valleys. That is the whole goal. In the valleys, you want to have that mountaintop experience in the valleys. Yes. You have to have that. If without that, you're just going to fail because valleys are too tough, yeah. brethren. However strong you think you are as a Christian, valleys will break down the best of the Christians out in the world. That's you true. could be a seasoned soldier. You could have been in the battle for 20, 30, 40, even 50 years in Christian walk. But in the valleys, when you're all alone and when it's dark, when your body's failing, you know, when your family's failing, no, I mean, when your finances are failing, when every, ar everyone around you is gone to be with the Lord, man, it's going to be a tough battle. 
How are you going to go through it? How are you going to overcome these valleys? There are some things that you have to know when you're in the valley. There are some things that you have to really, really understand. In order to go through the valleys and keep that mountaintop experience, there are a few things that you and I have to know. First thing is that you're in the valley because it's God's plan. You have to understand, it's God's plan. That's why you are in the valley. When you know that someone is in charge, and you know that someone in charge is an almighty God, the creator of the universe, you have more assurance, you have more conviction, you have more strength, you have more power to go through it. Amen. I mean, you know, I see my wife go through it, and I know a lot of our brothers and sisters go through it. Yeah, you go through a lot of physical pain in your life, a lot. And as you grow older, unfortunately, you know, our body's going to break down. And you're going to go through the valley of physical infirmities. Man, it's tough. But you can't give up. That's part of God's plan. I mean, Romans 8.28 says that, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are they call according to his purpose. It's God's purpose. It's God's plan that you go through these physical infirmities. Yes. However tough it is, and don't ever, if you have not gone through it, think that you could empathize with them. You can't. I mean, if you have not gone through such a certain pains, don't ever go feel like, go, do not go talk to them and say, you know, I know what you're going through. You don't. You're a fool. You're a hypocrite. If you have not gone through certain things that another brother or sister is going through, don't ever say those things. That's foolish. All you could do is pray for them. Yes. That's it. Don't, don't even have a long conversation. You, know, you don't know what you're talking about. Just pray for them. But you are that person, if you're a brother or sister in Christ, who's going through those physical infirmities. Just remember, as time goes by, your next destination is the mountaintop. That's it. Amen. Time will fly by. As you know, we're already in the April. Time will eventually go by. Whether you like it or not, time will pass by. Yes. Whether you like it or not, I'm sure you like it, your valley will go by. It will pass by. You have to understand that you have a destination that's waiting for you. And that's mountaintop. So don't look down at the valleys. Keep on looking around the valleys, you know, looking at your infirmities, looking at other people's infirmities. You have to go look at the mountaintop. And you have to understand, when you do look at the mountaintop, as you look up, you're looking at God's plan. Yes. When you look up, you're looking at God's plan. Right? That's why, you know, there's a saying out there, when you're down, just look up. Amen. Right? I mean, God is in heaven, right? Yes. And then he's the creator of the universe, right? Amen. And then you, before you forget, he's also in you. Yes. Before you forget, you're still with the Holy Ghost Woo! too. And the Bible says Holy Ghost is your comforter. Thank in you, the Lord. valley, if God's plan for you is to go through that valley right now, he has given you the comforter to go through with that. Yes. Right? How often do you go to Holy Ghost to give you comfort? Don't go to your psychiatrist, psychologist, you know, your doctors first. I'm not saying you shouldn't go. You know, don't get me wrong. You do go to the hospital, and you have to go. Unlike some calls out there tell you, you know, just pray and you'll be healed. It doesn't work like that. you got to do your best. And you, you have to pray for good doctors. Yes. Right? That God will send you good doctors. Right? So you have to do your best. You know, we're not, we're not this, you know, shenanigans out there. You just want God to bless you no matter what type of stuff. You know, it's not about prosperity, gospel, prosperity, preaching, prosperity, right. Christian life. That's not our goal and purpose here. Right. Our purpose is to be in God's plan and follow God's plan, which is the will of God. Then you have to understand that valleys, again, do not go forever. It's going to end. Amen. I know how hard the pain is, right? Yes. From the secondhand experience that I see. And some of you know your experience firsthand, but you have to understand that it's not going to go forever. Yes. That's right. The Lord. It could end tomorrow. Amen. It could end years from now, but it's not going to go forever. Yes. You know what's going to go forever? Hell's going to go forever. That's true. So for saved people, it's temporary. Amen. Amen. 
temporary. Think about it. Man, there are days, you know, my wife can't walk, right? There are days when you can't walk. There are days when you can't even, you know, eat. There are days when you can't even move. There are days when you feel like, you know, why is this happening to me? But remember, it's all part of God's plan. Amen. When it's God's plan, who are you going to complain to, yeah. right? At the end of the day, God wants best for you. If you know God wants best for you, then what I'm going through is for the best result at the end. Then how can I complain? You can, but should you, no. right? You can. You have every right in the sight of human beings, in the sight of some brothers and sisters, because they don't know what you're going through. But will you complain to God in those situations, right? Why? Because you could still have joy of salvation Woo! at the end of the day. Even if your body is breaking down, you could still have joy of salvation. Yes. Even if you, know, you can't use your arms again, you could still have joy of salvation. That You know what? One day, I'm going to have a perfect body. Amen. No matter what happens, no matter how devil the world of flesh attacks me right now, I'm going to wake up one day in perfect body. No matter what happens, my destination is heaven. No matter what happens, I'm going to walk on pure gold. No matter what happens, I'm going to have my own mansions, right? No yeah. matter what happens, you know, whatever I did for the Lord, I'm going to get my Woo! rewards when it's good, right? No matter God. what happens, man, eternally I'm secure. Amen. No matter what happens, you know, I have the word of God to comfort yes. me. No matter what happens, I have the Holy Ghost. No matter what happens, you know. Lord Jesus Christ within me, no yes. matter what happens, right? Amen. I say you have to always remind yourself because if you don't remind yourself with things of God, God's plan, will of God, the word of God, as you're going through the valley, it's going to be very easy for you to just get dejected, True. get depressed. You know, every Christian goes through some kind of a depressing state. Yes. You could be the greatest Christian. You're still going to go some kind of down times, yes. right? And David was a great man, yes. right? Apostle Paul was a great man. Mm -hmm. But don't tell me that none of those you know, forefathers of faith did not go through the valleys. Everybody does. Amen. But some fail, right? Actually, everybody fails because nobody's perfect. Amen. Then if they fail, why do you, how do you expect you to you know, be perfect and yeah. succeed the whole no time? Better. Just remember that you and I are weak. Yes. And these things do happen because God wants you to know you cannot do anything without me. That's right. God wants you to reiterate in the valleys. Part of his plan for you to understand is that you, my child, cannot do anything without me. Yes, sir. We put ourselves in the valleys sometimes, right? Right. Yeah. And then you expect to do everything on your own. But that's when God will get your attention. There's some things that you need to understand. That's why you go through this. And you could only learn them in the valley. How many of you guys think that you will grow as a Christian if you don't go through the valleys? If you're always a mountaintop, you don't know what hardship is. Yeah. You don't know what pain is. You don't know what suffering is. You don't know what trials are. But you have to go through the valleys. In the mountaintop, how many of you guys you know, will thank God for certain things that you would never thank God for mm. here in the valleys, right? Yeah. You know? When you are going through breakups, when you're going through financial burden, when you're going through all these all this hardships, that's when human beings naturally go to the Lord. You know, that's, that's, you know, unfortunate, but it's our tendency. We True. tend to go to the Lord when things go wrong. We tend to go to the Lord in the times of need. We tend to go to the Lord in times of trials and sufferings. But without it, you never go to the Lord. I mind you. True. You know, some of these people out there, they think that, you know, everything is done because of their faith and their own faith and their everything's about themselves. Before you know it, God's going to teach them lesson. Yes. Before you know it, unless you wake up out of your dream, unless you wake up out of your foolish state, unless you wake up out of your, you know, high state, Preach. you're going to 
get some lessons coming your way. Yes. And people who do not understand God's plan, their common characteristic is that they're very hard-headed. Amen. They're very stubborn. They're proud. If you want to stay in the valley, and as you go through the valleys and you never want to get out of the valleys, just pray. I would just stay proud. Just be stubborn. Be hard-headed. And when that happens, what's going to happen? You won't, you won't realize God's plan. You're just stuck. You, you'll be stuck there. And the most unfortunate thing about that is that when you are proud, stubborn, stuck, I mean hard-headed, you won't even understand the joy of salvation. You won't even understand God's plan. You won't even get comfort. You don't even know where to get comfort. And you die as a miserable Christian. Wow. So many Christians die very miserable. Yes. To the contrary, where a lot of people say, you know, in these false churches, you, know, you die happy as a Christian. I mean, one thing for sure is that you've got to go to heaven, right? But the way you lived your life, be like, there's going to be a lot of regrets. Yes. The way you lived your life. This guy never got out of the valley. This sister never got out of the Help valley. Us, Lord. I mean, don't you want to die in a mountaintop? Amen. Stay? Yes. Shouting and praising God even yeah. in the valley. Hallelujah. If you are in the valley right now, do you have that mountaintop experience inside of you? Are you going through it? And as you see people going through this valley as brothers and sisters in Christ, as a human being, you have to have compassion. You have to be sensitive to each other's valley. Yes. Too many times people become too haughty. Too many times people become too nonchalant. Too many times people become so self-absorbed where, you know what? Like I mentioned at the beginning of the preaching, it's all right. It's not all right. Don't go to people and say it's all right. You think it's all right to them when they're going through their valleys? No. Again, I say you pray for them, but don't say stupid stuff. Amen. That's very insensitive comments that people make. Yes. Brothers and sisters in the same church don't talk for years and years and years because when someone was going through their valley, they said some dumb stuff, and they don't even realize it, right? If someone don't want to talk to you for a long time at the church, you know, it's either they're wrong or something you did wrong. Right. Simple as that. And a lot of times, because people aren't compassionate, people aren't sensitive, you know, they say very, very stupid and hurtful things. When someone is going through valleys and you know it, you just pray for them. Simple as that. If you think there's some encouraging words to say, maybe, right? You know, Dr. Rockman one of the times said, you know, someone was going through a hard time. He had nothing to say, so he just cried with them. That's all you could do. Sometimes that's all you could do. Amen. If you really want to care for brothers and sisters in Christ who's going through the valleys, all you could do is just sit next to them. Yes. All you could next to is maybe you cry together. That's all you could do. Don't let that stupid tongue say anything. Right. Yes. I mean, certain times, Bible believers are so dumb. They go, oh, yeah, brother, let me share a verse with you. They already know the verse. They heard the verse. They're meditating in those verse. They don't need to hear it from your mouth. Right? As good as it is, as perfect as it is, you have to know the times and the situation to say those things. And as a Christian, you have to grow. You have to grow in the valley. If it's God's plan for you, just go through with it. If it's God's plan for you, just realize that after I go through my valleys, I'm going to learn something from it. I'm going to get closer to God. Yes. Because in the valley, if you don't get closer to God in the valley, there's no way you're going to get closer to God ever. Right. The mountaintop is just fake. Yeah. From my own Christian experience, I felt like I was closer to God. But as I went through the valley, man, I don't go to God. What was that about? That's no different than when you're in a charismatic church. 
That's no different than when you're like in Calvary Chapel. That's no different than when you're doing praise and worship, singing, you know, hallelujah a thousand times, jumping up and down, waving your head, right? And afterwards, you feel good, but you don't get anything out of it because it was not done spiritually. It was all done carnally. It was fleshly. Yes. You don't want that to happen. That's why just understand that, you know what? I, if you're not going through the valleys, you will very soon. So don't worry about it. I'm like, oh, I'm too young, you know. I'm not going to go. You are, you know. I mean, if you're Nathan, you're still going to go through the valleys, you know. Everybody's going to go through the valleys. Yes, sir. I mean, David went through the valleys. I mean, are you better than David? I mean, according to the verse 4, again, valley of the shadow of death. He went through the valleys where he was about to die, right? But he still found comfort in the Lord. Verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He knew. He knew God's plan. He knew that when he committed adultery and murder, he knew God's plan that he's going to pay for it. When you're going through the valley, just know. You're going to have to pay for it. That's God's plan. Yes. Just pray to God for more mercy and grace. Because you reap what you sow. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter 6. But when you trust in the Lord and know that you're in God's plan, then, then it's good. Amen. And now some people say, why is this happening to me? I want to ask you, are you a Job? The most righteous person? Let's go to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Sometimes you and I have to be, see uh, each other in a right perspective. Job was known as a perfect and upright man. Are you a perfect and upright man? No. I'm not. Let's look at Job chapter 1, verse 1. Let's look at verse 1 first. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Let's go to verse 20. Now Job lost everything. I mean everything. Then Job arose, verse 20, and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. You know, when we're in the valleys, this is how we have to respond. Amen. It's hard. Don't get me wrong. If someone says easy, man, I mean, you're high, right? <laughs> Something's wrong with your brain. Can you and I actually say, verse 21, when you lose your health, when you lose your finances, when you lose your family, when you lose everything that you ever cared for, which was most precious to you. Can you say, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither? Can you say the Lord gave? Lord gave you good health, but Lord can take it away. The Lord gave. The Lord gave you good family, loved ones. Lord could take him away. Lord gave you possessions. Just like Job, Lord could take it away. Yes. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. What would you say? Many Christians would say, Lord, why? Lord, I tried to serve you. I was in a Bible-believing church. I believe King James Bible, dispensationalist. I went out witnessing. I did everything that I could do for you, but you have taken away. True. Why? You know, I don't want to serve you anymore. You know, I have to go through this valley of depression because of you, Lord. Or are you going to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. And this is probably the, one of the greatest statements ever in the Bible, in the human being history. Amen. When you lose everything, mind you, Job was the wealthiest. Lost everything. His children, yes. his wife, cursed him, cursed at him. Lost everything. But he still says, blessed be the name of the Lord. Man, I wonder if we, we, you and I, you know, we need to strive for something in life. Then we need to strive to have this type of testimony in our life. Amen. Lord gave and Lord has taken away. 
Even if the Lord takes away my loved ones, blessed be the name of the Lord. Even if the Lord takes away my everything, physical abilities, blessed be the name of the Lord. Even if the Lord takes, I mean, everything away, yeah. blessed be the name of the Lord. You're left alone in the valley. You say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you do it? Can you do it? You can't do it on your own. No. But you can know for sure that it's God's plan. As a Christian, whether it's good or bad, it's all in, the, in God's plan. Romans 8, 28. That's why at one day, that's why there's going to be shouting. I mean, there's going to be shouting and shouting and praising God because you see everything played before you in your life. Yes. Oh, well, that's why it happened, Lord? Man, I couldn't walk, but it, oh, man, that was for your glory. Yeah. Oh, man, I was like, you know, I had pennies in my bank account, but that was for you, Lord? Oh, man, yes. I should have gave more glory to you, Lord. Oh, man, loved ones were gone early? Man, that's better, you know? The world was getting worse, yes. you know? Hindsight, and then you're like, man, praising God and praising God. That's why when you're in the valley, just remember, it's part of God's plan. And secondly, you have to know that in the valley, there's God's presence always. Amen. God's presence is always there. Whether you like it or not, if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, He's in you. His presence in the valley, right? Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're talking about Apostle Paul, who went through so many valleys, right? I mean, countless valleys. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. If you're going through the valley right now, just remember, you're not alone. You're never alone. But you have God's presence in you. You have Lord Jesus Christ in you. You have Holy Ghost living inside of you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, the Bible says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Man. Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Man, if Lord's grace is not sufficient, then whose grace is sufficient? Huh. You know what? I could go through this valley because the Lord is with me. You get closer and closer to the Lord Yes. in the valley. That's why if you're going through the valley, you should be thankful. Amen. Because it's an opportunity for you to be closer to God. You could actually have a closer fellowship. The greatest times of fellowship a man can say with their Savior is during their valleys. You. you know, mountaintop experience is great. I love, how, I love shouting, running the aisles, listening to great preaching. But those fellowships does not compare to the fellowships that I have with him during my days of valleys. Amen. You get much more closer to the Lord. You rely upon the Lord. You cling up to the Lord. Yes. It's like... You know, we saw the verse last week in Colossians chapter 3. He's really your life. You know, it's our life. When you're in the valley, you know that Christ is my life. That's it. Without it, how are you going to go through it, right? You understand that in some of the darkest times of your life, the toughest times of your life, you will feel the embrace of Jesus Christ. You understand his care for you. You understand many the verses, right? My God shall supply all your needs according to his glory in Christ Jesus. You understand the verses where he says, My God shall supply all your needs. You understand, for he cares for you. You just understand Jesus Christ the same today, you know, yesterday, forever. You understand many of the verses. Fear thou not, for I am with thee, like in Isaiah 41.10. You understand, continuously, Exodus 14.14, 14, Lord shall fight for you. You know, in the valley, the battle's always fierce. Spiritual warfare, right? Yes. There's got to be a constant battle. Don't you want someone to fight for you? Yes. Right? You know, during street preaching on Friday, it was tough. Friday of street preaching. You know, one of those days where we had a lot of opposition from the devil. We had two drunkards, two Korean drunkards, 
one on the market side and one on the street side, creating havoc throughout the whole street preaching. You know, so my corner had you know David and not David, Daniel and and Vicky, and they're continuously preaching. This crazy guy was just going out the street, you know, green light, and then just stopping the traffic. You know, I mean, he was carrying like knives and you know, hammer. Come to find out, you know, and and a lot of times people could just be intimidated and stop preaching at those moments, you know. But they even trained very well, you know. Amen. Vicky and Daniel just kept on preaching. Amen. Amen. Because one guy was right next to, you know, standing, you know, where Vicky was standing, but you know, nothing was deterring her. And of course, you know, we were watching, you know, closely. And when you realize that, hey, there's going to be fear in the valley, but however, it's not a lonely walk when you have the Lord's presence with you. Yes. What can men do unto you? I mean, just like in the book of Job, devil cannot touch you unless he gets permission from God the Father. Right. Even that cuckoo was wielding hammer or knife, you have to be wise about it. Don't stand right in front of it. You know, stay away from it. But even then, you know the Lord's going to protect you. Right? Yes. In the valleys, you will understand more and more the presence of God. You understand that I can't go through it on my own, but I know I can go through it with the Lord. I can't finish the walk, right? I can't finish the climb, but I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's why in the valley, you understand that Jesus Christ will never leave you, nor forsake you. You hear people say it all the time, right? But Bible becomes most powerful when it's most personal to you. In order to be personal to you, many times you have to go through the valleys. Yes. You have to. If you don't, you're not going to rely on the Lord. Right. You're not going to seek his presence. You're just not. You're not made that way. I'm not made that way. Unfortunately, when things are going all you know, good and stuff, we refuse to praise God many times. We don't do it from our heart. But when things are tough, when everything's not going your way, when the world is against you, when your family is against you, when your health is against you, you start going to 2 Corinthians 12.9. My grace is sufficient for thee. You start clinging onto the word of God. That's why it's happening. And lastly, you know, in the valley, you can understand power of God. You know, you <laughs> can you doubt Almighty God? Can you doubt your salvation? No, you can't. You could. I mean, if you're living sinful ways, but. You know there's power of God in you. you know, he's going to s- save your body as well one day, mm-hmm. right? Yes. I mean, he saved your soul forever. Amen. Right? Thank you, Lord. You're going to have that, you know, Jesus Christ-like body one day. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Man, <laughs> I think, you know, that's one of the biggest hollers going to be praise to God. People are like, praise the Lord, you know. No more back pain. Woo! No more eye pain. Yes. Man. Amen. No more stomach pain. Amen. Man, no more walking from here to there. No more, you know, getting out of the bed. You know, your body is aching. You know, no more going to the doctors. Amen. No more x-rays, MRIs, CAT scans, you know. You, no more God. any of that. Your body will be safe forever as yes. well. That's and that's power of God. Buddha can do that. That's right. Man. Man, popes can't do that for you. Nada. I mean, Muhammad, get out of here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Only our Lord and Savior hey. can do that for yes. you. Yes. Then in the valley, you have hope. In the valley, you could actually go through it with a little bit of joy, a little bit of smile. Yes. You could actually go through it, drum roll. You could go through it with thanksgiving. Man, that's tough. But you can't go through the valleys thanking God. 
Can you believe it? I mean, you lost your health, you're thanking God. And the amazing thing is that we have some brothers and sisters in Christ who's here right now or who's gone to be with the Lord. Actually, thank God. Even though they, they were paralyzed, even though they lost an eye or vision, hearing, even though they couldn't really do anything except pray, they couldn't witness, but except pray, they still thank God that they had the sound mind to at least pray to God for the ministry, for the brothers and sisters in Christ, yes. during true preaching, visitation, all of that. Can you believe it? But why? how could that be possible through normal human beings' eyes? They say it's impossible. But it is possible with God. Yes. Amen. Things that are impossible with man, it's always possible with God. Yes. You have to understand that. My God can do impossible things. That's power of God. Yes. He can do miracles. That's power of God. I mean, if it's his will, you know, if you're hurting, he could just like that yes. heal you. If it's not his will, it's not going to happen, right? Amen. You know, if it's his will, then it's going to happen. If it's not, it's not. Yes. Simple as that. Let's make our Christian walk very simple. <laughs> you know, if Lord wants it, yes. If Lord doesn't, no. What more do you have to complain about? What more do you have to go to him about? Yeah. Right? You're like, Lord, I want this. No. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the answer, Lord. Yes. You know, Lord, I want to get out of the valley right now. Nah, not yet. Okay, Lord. You know, I know one day I'll be getting out of it. But I'll trust in you, Lord. Right? But sometimes Lord will be gracious. Okay? You know my plan. You know my presence. And you know my power. So let's go to the mountaintop for a little bit. Man, that's when people who went through the valleys, when they're in the mountaintop, that's when you know their shout is genuine. You know where their praise is from bottom of their heart. Their fellowship with the Lord is real. Yes. That's why... Don't neglect the valleys. Don't hate it, right? You have to be thankful for it. Amen. You have to make sure that you cannot go through it on your own. Yes. You have to make sure that you don't complain and murmur to God. You have to make sure that, hey, this is part of God's plan. Let's understand. You know, when you're going to some long, long road, and it takes you like 20 hours to get to a destination. But you get a lot happier, right? When there's 45 minutes left. When there's 10 minutes left. Yes. But when you actually see it, you're very happy. All the long road, you know, this dreary, you know, there's nothing to see. Just darkness you went through. Man, you don't even remember it anymore. It's like, did that really happen, you know? But through it all, you trusted the Lord and then... In your Christian walk, then it's all, all of these valleys are temporary. And then you see that eternity, like, man, praise God. Good. Man, thank you, Lord. Yes. Oh, man. And as you go through the valleys, finally, then you could actually empathize with your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's when you could be that encouragement. You could admonish one another. Man, if you didn't go through back pain, don't tell someone that, oh, yeah, I know what you're going through. If you didn't go through a loss of your loved one, don't tell someone that I know how it goes. Right? If you didn't be, go bankrupt or something, don't go to someone who's bankrupt and say, hey, you know, this is how you should have done your finance. Right? <laughs> oh, man. If you didn't lose, I mean, if you didn't lose your business, don't go to someone like, hey, you should have followed this way, you know, like this, whoever ways. Right? It's up to God. Yes. I mean, God could give you and take away whatever you have. Anytime. So it's not your job to teach other person how to do it, right? right? I mean, there are some things that's allowed and, you know, needed, but it's, when someone's going through those tough times, if you haven't gone through it, just pray for that person. Amen. Is any of you going through the valley right now? I'm sure many of you are. I, mean, I certainly am. It's a valley. Every day you go through it, yes. right? Until we go to heaven, this is inevitable. Accept it. You know, as they say, in order to resolve or solve problems, first thing is you have to admit it and accept it, right? Yes. You and I go through the valleys, accept it. Remember, it's God's plan. He's always there for you. Amen. You can get closer to him through these valleys. 
and you could see his power working in your life. Yeah. Going through the valleys is part of a process for any Christian to grow and get closer to God. Let's pray. Dear Father, we love our mountaintop experience. We, however, need to understand a lot of times that's short-lived, but we go through our valleys. It's temporary. It may seem forever, but it's temporary. It's all in your plan, Lord God. However hard it is, the trials, our bodily aches, finances, relationship, everything, Lord, we'll just trust in you. Help every one of us to cling closer to you. Understand that this is an opportunity for each person to have a closer fellowship with you, Lord God. And understand that omnipotent, you know, all powerful God that you are, the creator of the universe. And we know that you can solve anything. You could give us everything and you could take us everything. Help us to have a testimony like Job. Blessed be the name of the Lord for whatever happens. And certain things our brethren going through is so tough, Lord. Please give each person comfort and help us to pray for each other instead of you know, always looking to give advices or criticize or critique, but help us to have a this compassionate and sensitive mind to love each other and pray for each other. I pray that you give comfort, Lord. Uh, myself included, we need your comfort, Lord. Going through these valleys, we can't do it alone. And give us strength mm-hmm. to go through it and help us never to rely on our own strength, the world, the devil, and the flesh, Lord. And above all, Lord, we truly want our body to be saved once and for all. Thank you for saving our souls from hell, Lord God. Amen. We need you to come back right now, Lord. Yes. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.